Well, hello there. Come on in. I'm Chris Brown. I'm your humble chimney sweep. I was just going over your chimney inspection report, but now that you're here, make yourself comfortable. Let's go over it together, shall we? Okay, now let's take a look at the inspection report and see how it reads out. This is a generic report. This is exactly what you will get, only your information obviously will be filled into all these blanks. The upper right hand corner of the report is the legend. Each one of these initials pertain to something. A is consistent with the age of the chimney. B, C comments below. C, repairs needed. D, need further evaluation or E, not applicable. And they're placed into the boxes next to the parts of the chimney that can be easily identified in this diagram. And then of course you'll find my comments here below. Now let's take a look at your particular, your personal report. So stay with me. Hey, what a great historical house in a very historical area of North Carolina. Concord is a wonderful place to live. Let's um, let's take a look at up on top. So we are looking at a um, uh, the chimney for the, both the study and the living room. You can see there's two flues clearly here. Both of them have uh, top ceiling dampers. These are pop-up models. Uh, top ceiling dampers come traditionally in two types, uh, drop in, which would be like a LeMans damper and these pop-ups, which are called energy savers. And let's shut that off. Okay. And, uh, so that's what we have here. Now, both of them have been burned up pretty good, uh, due to a chimney fire and both the stainless steel cables that go down and operate the, uh, both dampers has burned away from these chimney fires. And uh, they've had at least one or maybe two. The cables used to come down into the firebox area and would uh, you'd lock them into this uh, cl these clips. Each fireplace has one of these. Uh, but the cables have uh, long since uh, burned away. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, on the uh, bedroom upstairs fireplace, got a, more of a traditional copper cap with a uh, screen around it to keep the creatures and the rain and stuff out. This is what that fireplace looks like. It's a traditional coal fireplace. You got the uh, summer door here. You know, it's, the, uh, it's a complete set actually. I, I checked it out. I'm very familiar with these uh, types of fireplaces that have done a lot of restoration work over the past 37 years with these fireplaces. Uh, it's got the coal basket in here. Uh, somebody's been burning wood in here. This newspaper was stuffed up inside. Uh, this, uh, what my recommendation here, since the flu in here, let's see if we can get a decent shot. The, the, this, this is actually, it's hard for you to know what this is, but this is the flu coming from the uh, basement area from the old furnace flu. It's kind of cracking here and it's running right up the middle of this. Uh, here's another look at it. Uh, chimney. So what's happening is the, the uh, smoke coming, uh, going up here and the heat is actually passing by the old furnace flue, which is cracked up to find its way up this flue here. My recommendation up there is to use a vent free coal basket uh, setup. Uh, they look beautiful. There'll be period to the house. You cannot use a vent free system in a bedroom if it's truly used as a vent free system which means it would be blocked off and all the uh, uh, everything would be coming into the room the reason that you can't do that is you do not have fresh combustion air being drawn into the room and it's a confined area uh, however if you use it as a vented product which means you're allowing everything to go up the chimney it then will pull the combustion air in and you can uh, uh, be within the uh, code code requirements for that. Um, downstairs living room fireplace. This is a this was a coal. This was a I'm sorry, a chimney fire right here. Uh, your humble chimney sweep has seen hundreds of them over the years. We've inspected them for insurance companies. Uh, we've worked side by side with structural engineers. But this is what the, the creosote looks like once it's burned up, and uh, these people have definitely had a chimney fire. Uh, it's also been recoated with another coating of creosote that could uh, obviously catch on fire again. My recommendation here on both this one and the, um, the study fireplace, because they're both encapsulated in the same chimney, the same body, 
uh, chimney fire, uh, uh, your chimney is about 200 degrees operating temperature. When you have a chimney fire, suddenly it's 1700 degrees. What happens is that sudden change in temperature is what cracks the liners in a chimney. Uh, and so my recommendation to have uh, these two wood burners swept out and re-scanned uh, again to make sure there's no cracks or holes in there, that would be the smartest thing to do. Uh, both the fire boxes are, have some issues in them. The fire box, the area that you put the uh, fire in, uh, this is the areas where you would find a traditional damper in both fireplaces. Of course, uh, this house was built before dampers were, uh, were invented. Now, th this is a stock photo, one of my stock photos, uh, and it just shows you what happens after a chimney fire, uh, the cracks in the flue liner system. So, uh, it's just something to think about. Uh, more of the same. You can see the glazing in there, the fire boxes. This is the a study fire box is in pretty tough shape. You folks have questions for me. Now, I've attached uh, to this email uh, a phone number for a chimney sweep in uh, Concord, who I have referred to in the past, and a very, very uh, uh, capable person to help you. If the chimney needs some extensive uh, repairs, he will have the crew to, to handle that for you. So... His number will be uh, attached to the email, and if you folks have questions for me personally, 704-526-6348, or you can email me at chris at affordablesweep.com. Thanks.